Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. This morning we're going to pull the shift lever out of my father-in-law's snapper and we're going to try to install a grease fitting in it so we can grease it and keep it shifting a little smoother. So let's move the camera over there and see what kind of trouble we can get into this morning. Okay, here's the shifter I'm talking about. And right now you need a 7 16 and a half inch wrench. And we're going to take off the linkage on the back side. The nuts on the inside, and it's a little hard to get to. I've got this one loosened up a little bit already. Got a nut and a lock washer on it. <clears throat> now we're going to use my valve spring compressor that I picked up at my Napa Auto Store. Get this hooked on here. Yep. We've got to grab one more coil on that spring. Springs kind of twisted at an angle. I can't really get onto it. There we go. Now get some pliers and pull this cotter key out. Try to pull this pin out. And they usually are always stuck in there. Well, that one was really stubborn. I had to get a, a punch out and drive it out of there. Apparently, it was rusted pretty bad in that shaft. So we'll have to clean that up. Now this thrust washer looks pretty good outside of its rusty. And under the steel one, they have a nylon one that's also stuck on the shaft. We got to release a spring. nylon washer is really gripping. <sighs> okay, this one is one of the newer styles that has a nylon spacer on the shaft and inside of this tube that helps it from rusting on. That's probably why this one still shifted pretty good. It could have used some oil or something in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to drill a hole down through the center of this shaft for a grease fitting. And we're going to drill a cross hole out between these two nylon bushings. I think I'll get out my uh, wire wheel and clean all the rust off of this and I may have to try to get some of the rust out of the inside of this tube. Let's see what I can come up with. Okay we took the wire wheel and I cleaned the shaft up now we're gonna we'll put this these nylon bushings back on here. 
and we're going to make a mark right in between these two bushings on the shaft. I don't know if you can see the, the nylon bushings here. We'll make a mark right in the center. That's where we're going to drill our cross hole. So now we can take this stuff back off. And we can run over to the drill press and drill this out. Now, off camera, I cleaned the center of this hole out with a small cylinder hone on the end of my drill. I just stuck it in there and got all the rust out of there I could. Now, let's see if we can drill a hole in the bottom of this thing. Now, I've got a center drill in the drill press, and it all depends on what kind of steel they used when they made this shaft, and how much heat they put into it when they welded it. That's going to determine how much trouble we have drilling it. So, let's see if we can... Get a center started in here. Well, it did, did make a hole, so maybe it's not too hard. We'll see what we do on this. Speed, drilling a hole in hard steel or mild steel, it's kind of like driving a car. You have to remember, speed kills. If you spin this drill too fast for the type of steel you're drilling, all you're going to do is burn up the drill and you're not going to make a hole. A little oil would help if it's hard. If not, you shouldn't have too much trouble drilling this hole. This seems to be drilling quite nice. Now we want to set up our stop because we don't want to drill any deeper than we have to. We're going to run this drill down here and kind of eyeball the mark we put on there. And we're going to set our depth stop on the drill press. down to depth. Now, the drill I used to drill the main hole with for the tap was a number 3 drill, which is really close to a 732nd. So if you don't have a number 3 drill, you can use a 732nd drill and work just fine. Now this vise I got is really helpful. It's just a cheap uh, drill press vise, but it does have two V's machined into it, one horizontally and one vertically. That really helps align round stuff when you're trying to drill it. 
So we'll put it in the V the other way. And we're probably going to want to use our center drill because trying to drill on that round surface it's just going to want to walk around on us. I don't know if I have enough travel here. Nope, I'll have to crank up the table. Okay, let's start this little cross hole. And you don't necessarily need a cross hole that size. I'm dropping down to drill that I grab. I grabbed a 764. Just something for the grease to come through. Doesn't have to be a real big hole. I mean, hey, I had no grease at all before, so any any is going to be better than nothing. left is to tap the hole. You want to make sure you get all the shavings out of that hole though. You don't want to pump them into your nylon bushing. We'll use a little air when we get back on the other side of the room. Now to tap that hole. Okay now I'm back over here and this is my tapping head. Uh, it's extremely useful. It's, uh, of course, I have to say it's made in China, but it does work nice. Uh, it's got a bunch of holders for your different size taps, and these snap into the bottom of this shaft. And it has a counterweight, so it, it holds it up so you can change parts if you're doing multiple parts. And it really does <laughs> work pretty slick. It keeps everything nice and square. You have a crank on here, and you can really get some leverage to crank them taps in. Let me slide this over here. Sorry about the wiggling. And we're just going to run this tap in here a little bit. It doesn't have to be very deep for this little grease fitting. That'll just about do it. Now you can bolt this to the bench which I have it set up for the bench over there to bolt it down so it doesn't move around on me. But that bench is so cluttered full of stuff, I, I'll just do it over here. And that is all it is to it. Now let's get, I need to get a file. Oh, I got one laying here. We want to file off that cross hole and get the burrs off it. Now I'm going to grab an air hose and make sure I don't have any chips in here. Okay, we got that cleaned out. Now let's stick our grease fitting in. That tightens up good. Now we're going to leave this out until we get it reassembled because I don't want uh, to break this off with that spring compressor. Okay, I think I'm going to put a little WD-40 on this just to make it a little easier to put it back together. And 
and while I'm at it, I might as well take the rust off this thrust washer. Now we're going to have a grease fitting in here. We might as well get rid of the rust because I don't think that will be coming back. Now we'll put on these nylon bushings. Might as well put a little bit on that. Help that go in a lot better. Our spring on. And we'll try to get this compressor back on here. Sometimes this is almost a two-person job. Now we'll get this thrust, <clears throat> thrust washer back on here. This pin was so rusty, I had to drive it out. And I think I'm going to wire brush this a little, maybe it'll go in a little better. Okay, now to get that pin back in there, I had to actually take a quarter inch drill and clean that hole out to get that pin to go in and out of there. Goes in nice now, but man, that's hard to believe that that was that rusty. Just get it to line up. Now put the gutter key back in. Bend that a little bit. take this off. Wow. Maybe. And we can hook a linkage back up. Lock nut, lock washer and the nut. That's a real handy place to get to. Now we'll get our grease fitting. And by the way, these grease fittings have a quarter 28 thread on the bottom of them. And they're very short threaded area. So you don't need a lot of threads in the hole. That's why I didn't run that cap in all the way. Now let's see if we can get some grease to go in there. I can see it coming out of the crack in this tube. And that is what we want. That will help this thing shift so much nicer. There, I got the linkage tightened back up. It's been greased and it shifts a whole lot better than it used to. And the nice part about it, it'll be shifting nicely for years to come because you're going to be able to grease it now. So that's it. 
even with messing around with this camera, it still only took me 20 minutes to do it. So it's really worthwhile to put a grease fitting in there. Some are going to say, well, it has nylon bushings. Why do you need a grease fitting? If rust gets in there, or I should say if water gets in there and it starts to rust, it's still going to bind up the nylon bushings. It's not going to last forever. And I did notice on this one that differs from the older ones. The older ones were an actual piece of tubing that they used, and it was seamless. And water couldn't really get into it like this one. This one's not a piece of tubing. It's just a rolled piece of steel, and it's got a nice crack down the top of it. So anything can work its way down in that crack because it, uh, I'd say it was probably a 30 second opening on that crack. Because when I pumped grease into it, it came out of that crack. So what it is important to try to keep these things greased as best as we can to keep them running. I just had a guy email me the other day. He said he's had his for over 40 years. It's a series I believe he said two. So he's way back in the 60s and he's still running this machine. So if you take care of them, they're going to last. So that's it. If you have any questions or comments, put them down in that description box below or send me an email. And please don't forget to subscribe. It really does help me distribute and spread these videos out. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you soon.